Do you hear that? Oh, that's the sound of everybody in bed, and that means it's time to quilt. And I think I just may have designed the most perfect quilt pattern in the world. Okay, that might be overselling it, but it's pretty freaking awesome. So let's get started. So I have a feeling I may have oversold the pattern just a bit, but I think it's pretty clever. It is a take on the braid block, and it uses these boundless botanicals, the purple and the blue, looks fantastic, and a pre-cut roll of two and a half inch strips, just amazing. And when you look at this quilt when it's done, you won't believe how it actually came together. But before I can show you that, I've gotta cut it up, so let's do it. So the first background, this blue, is going to be cut into some pretty big squares and some even bigger squares. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight as we're making this braid quilt, the free pattern I've put together for you. Hopefully you've also checked out episodes of True Up, the new series that shows me during the day. And the latest episode is gonna be even more fun because I'm throwing a party for some special gals at my quilt shop. So be sure to check that out. So I'm gonna take some of these larger squares. I'm gonna cut them in half to make some nice big triangles and it'll be time to cut up the purple fabric. So for the light purple background, I'm gonna cut that into squares and a few triangles as well. And here is the moment of truth. There's no going back. I'm gonna open this roll of pre-cut strips and I'm actually gonna sub-cut them into smaller sections. Now, if you've ever made a braid quilt before, you know there's a couple different ways you can go about it. I'm gonna use the binding tool, which is meant to help you join up the ends of your binding easily, but a lot of people use this handy tool to make their braid block units and that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna take my pre-cut strips and using that binding tool, I'm gonna cut them into sections. So taking those beautiful blues, purples, teals, aquas, and actually these colors right here are in the background. So I'm gonna set those aside for another project. I don't want the same color in my background as I have in my blocks. Okay, so taking my strips, I'm gonna stack them on top of each other so I can cut them quicker. Then I'm gonna align the binding tool along the strip. And I'm gonna cut diagonally just along this, this side right here. It's gonna make it the perfect size for our braid block unit. Now, since I have that fabric doubled up, what I'm getting are actually two different strips that are mirror images of each other. And that is what we want. We don't want them all facing the same way. Now, when I go to quilt my next one, this is how my ruler was. I'm going to rotate it and then cut along the edge here to get my next set of units. And since this is a scrappy, beautiful quilt, I'm just gonna make a nice pile of all of them. I'm gonna cut up a range of colors doing that and then I'll show you just how easy it is to make this block. I got all the pieces I need to make my braid unit, but before I assemble the block, I'm gonna sew this little square onto this side of the units. So I have some of those units assembled and I need to do all the rest in that direction, but I wanted to show you how this block comes together. So I'm gonna pull these aside, bring back in my beautiful square, and now we're gonna start building that braid from the top up. So starting from one side of our block, I'm gonna pick a color that angles down like this. I'll know it's wrong if it's angling any other direction. It needs to act like it's coming down towards my block. And then on the next side, I'm gonna lay one of the pieces that have that square. So as you can see, this is where that first braid is starting to come together. Now it's scrappy, so I'm gonna try to make sure that I have different colors. I'm not lining up one color next to the other. I'm not worrying about it, of course, but here you'll see the next one come in and then another one with the piece like that. As you can see, this is gonna be really fast to put together and it's gonna look great. So I'm gonna keep going till I have five on each side, a total of 10, and then I'll sew it together. Now normally you could chain piece these blocks where you did step one through all of them and so on, but I kind of like laying them out, seeing how it looks and doing them one at a time. It's totally up to your personal preference. And there is my first braid block. I'm gonna give it a quick press. And here are a few more of those beautiful braids with all those gorgeous colors. And I'm gonna make several of them, except some of them are gonna get a little bit extra. So I'm gonna set these two aside. Don't worry, we'll be coming back to you in a minute. And for some of the braid blocks, I'm actually gonna flip it around and do the same on the other side, with only two on each side this time. And 
and there is the bigger unit, the bigger braid unit that's gonna make up this quilt. Now, I'm gonna show you how this comes together to make the sides of our whole quilt top. So this is where the quilt gets a little different. We're not doing the regular basic block by block layout. We're actually assembling this in quarters. So I'm taking two of my braid blocks. I know they look kind of weird, but this is where the background comes in and helps form the shape that we need. So here are my triangles and they are cut larger. They're supposed to be. That's what's gonna help give me room to trim them down. And here we can see, there we go. So I'm gonna sew this triangle to this edge and what I'm doing is trying to find the middle point of this side of the triangle and align it on the middle point of my side and that's gonna make sure I have overhang on both sides of this block. And then I'm gonna sew a quarter inch along that seam. I'm gonna do the same on both sides. Okay, I have my two units right here. I'm gonna sew along this area right here and it's gonna make a V for victory. And then I get to add my next triangle. There we go, it's starting to come together. It doesn't quite look like a quilt block yet, but don't worry about it. We are gonna add another triangle along the bottom. So I'm getting this whole big stealth bomber vibe going on, but I'm gonna sew it together the same way and then you'll see how it comes together to form half of my quilt. Right, there is our quilt unit. I'm gonna trim it up, make it look nice and straight, and then we'll see how it comes together. So I have two of my side units, and I know this looks kind of crazy, but this is actually one of the corners of the quilt. What I'm gonna put right here in the center is that other braid unit that I made that had the extra on the other side. So here you can see I have my normal braid unit, a couple extra pieces down here, and then I added a couple of those purple triangles just like I added the other triangles, and then I'm gonna slide this down. Now this is gonna be the corner of the quilt, so I have to add in those pieces as well. And we're gonna put a square here and a rectangle here. Now hold on a second, just wait. I know this looks a little weird. We're gonna have to do a partial seam. Hold on, wait, let me tell you, it's not that bad. Basically what I'm gonna do is insert these pieces by using the partial seam technique. And it's very easy because you just quilt the seam, but you stop a little short. So what I'll do is sew along this longest seam here. I'll join these two pieces, but I'm gonna stop about a quarter of an inch from the edge. I wanna be sure that I leave a quarter of an inch unsewn so that I can come in and add this side, stopping at a quarter of an inch, and then add this side, stopping at a quarter of an inch, and that will pull that together. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, sewing along this seam, leaving the quarter inch, and then sewing in the piece like that. Now the great thing about it is this is such a nice blender. It's gonna hide any seams that aren't perfect. I promise you it's easy. Let me show you how to do it. This is the part right here where my partial seam is going to happen. Instead of starting right here at the edge, I marked a point about a quarter of an inch down. That's where my line is going to start and I'm gonna sew along this whole seam with that quarter inch seam allowance. Since I'm starting with a quarter inch, I'm gonna do a little back stitching. I'll back up just a bit to help kind of secure that line of sewing and then go on my way as normal. And there's my quarter inch. So there is my partial seam. My next piece will come in like this. I'll fold it over and I'm gonna start the line of sewing a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And I'm almost done. I'm gonna do the same thing, folding it this way, sewing a quarter of an inch along the edge. So now my partial seam is finished. I backstitched each time I came to that quarter inch. It looks nice, just gonna give it a press and do the same with the other pieces. Okay, so here's a section that we've been working on. Now, I know you might not be a huge fan of those partial seams, but trust me, when I was writing out the pattern, doing that saves about 10 steps and about 20 pieces of fabric. So it's gonna look fine. Now you might be kind of confused as to what's going on. This is actually the top of my quilt. So if I were to rotate it like this, that's where you start to see the quilt come together. And I had the middle section right here. This middle strip uses the same braid units that I used right here. The only difference is in between, it got a square within a square. So that's gonna kind of make this purple star shine. Now this half of the quilt is the same as that half. So all I have to do is sew these sections together using my partial seams to fill in the other corners and I'll be ready to go. My quilt top is finished and you know I designed this pattern if there's no borders around the edge. Of course you can put them on there if you want, but I'm ready to get to the quilting. I'm so glad you stuck with me through those partial seams. I promise they're not that hard and the reward is to get to machine quilt this quilt. So I'm gonna get to it. 
Starting out, I'm gonna echo the inside of my strip about a quarter of an inch. And I love how echoing separates the filler from the rest of the block. So I'm gonna echo the whole top side, travel down the diagonal, and then echo the bottom part of my strip, and then go right into my filler, which I'm gonna use a wishbone design. You know, this is one of my favorites. You've seen this from me before. And it's a line that angles, loops around, and back down. So I'm gonna fill in that whole area in between those echo lines with my wishbone until I get to the edge of my area. Now what I'm gonna do is travel along the edge, travel along the top and the side so that I can get to my next point. And then when I'm touching this blue square, I'm gonna quilt a continuous curved line until I return back to my home base or where I started. Then I can finish traveling, go along the top of my scene, and then in the next strip, I think I'm gonna do something just slightly different. How about a serpentine line? This is a line that curves out to one edge and then back. And I like to think of it almost as an on-ramp or an off-ramp for a highway. You just go one direction and swoop into the next maybe add a little more continuous curve into these blue squares, and then repeat, quilting echo lines and serpentine lines in the strips. When I'm in the blue background, I think I'm gonna do some bigger swirls that have a lot of nice movement. So I'm gonna start by quilting a line that curls in on itself, and then I'm going to echo that line a couple times, and then when I'm ready, I'm gonna go into my next line, next curl, echo, 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 quilting those swirls. Now those swirls are gonna look great in the background, but they're also helping me maneuver to my next strip so that I can go into my next design, the serpentine lines. I love quilting pre-cut strips. You have it all nice and measured out. All you have to do is pick a couple designs and alternate between them. Well, I'm having too much fun quilting this braided star. I'll see you when I'm finished. I'm finished with this braided star quilt, and who knew that a basic braid block can be so fun when it's arranged just slightly different. I'm so glad I didn't let the partial seams keep me from finishing this quilt because the blues and the purple fabrics just look fantastic. Plus, I had an amazing time quilting all the different strips with some of my very favorite machine quilting designs. Don't forget, you can download this free pattern. I wrote it all just for you. So check out the description box below to find out how to get that. And if you wanna catch the season finale of my new series, True Up, you can check that out as well. So be sure to like the video and subscribe, and I'll see you soon with another episode of The Midnight Quilt Show.